Look, rule number one of journalism, you don't make yourself a part of the story, but this one is personal. This is my family. This is our journey and one I'm so honored to be a part of. How are you doing? Hi, Joe. How are you doing? Oh, nobody seems to As you look around, Father God, we thank you for this assembly. You can see their story in their eyes. I definitely have felt a lot of pride. Young and old, you can feel the history overflowing onto the dinner table. I had six sisters and four brothers. Everybody's gone but me. Family with the promise to never let their story, their legacy, fade away. I said, oh yes, Lord, this is our story. This is the Quandra story right here. And part of that story takes us here to George Washington's Mount Vernon. And before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. At the time of his death, records show the first president of the United States of America, along with his wife, owned more than 300 slaves. They all had various jobs, most of them working on the fields on several farms across the nearly 8,000 acre estate. We thank you for our ancestors who have worked and toiled. President Washington began questioning the morality of slavery, but he kept his views a secret until he died and freed the slaves he owned in his will in 1799. However, more than half of the slaves in Mount Vernon were still considered property of Martha Custis Washington's family, and neither she nor the president had the right to set them free. God, we know that freedom is not just for tomorrow, but it's for today, and we're experiencing that now. Despite his will, the 123 slaves Washington freed weren't released until two years later in 1801. On that list was a young woman, a teenager raised on River Farm, a slave named Nancy. Nancy caught her quander. I've always known the history. I've always known that we were all here. Um, and I think too often we take those things for granted. Yeah, now this story of discovery goes deeper. But to explain it, to really understand it, we have to go back to the beginning of my journey. <laughs> Of course, everybody says my father looks like me. <laughs> I think the resemblance is there. This is my dad, Michael Quander Sr. His father's name was Clarence Claudius Quander, and his mom's name was Helen. My grandparents had seven children, including my dad. Family documents allow us to trace his family line back to his great-great-grandparents in the early 1800s, Charles Henry Quander and Lucinda Hodge, who had at least 14 kids that we know of. My grandfather, Clarence Claudius, served as a first lieutenant in the United States Army and later died when my dad was just 10 years old. The pain you feel from a loss is always going to be with you for the rest of your life. You see, my dad credits his grandmother, Jenny or Nanny Quander, for instilling family values in him. But he says things were never really the same after his father passed away. He made sure that we always went around to visit other family members and things of that nature. But his passing, we kind of reverted into ourselves. So we stayed just amongst ourselves. And we didn't branch out and reach out to other family members. Now, this is an important part of the story. It explains my disconnection from the Quander family. Well, that was until now. Here we go. We started at the Moreland Spingarn Research Center at Howard University. Things just come to a standstill. Yeah. Up several stories. We made it. <laughs> the seventh floor. And inside of these boxes uh. are the full Quander family archives. You see, I always knew these documents existed, but I've never seen them with my own eyes. How you doing, man? Good so say, good to see you again. Say, give me a hug there, right? This is Rohi Lamin Quander. A lot of us call him Cousin Ro. He's the family historian. Yeah. I want to just kind of go through a lot of the stuff that you have here and talk about it. All right, well, let me put my gloves on here because all of this is, this quantum material is very sacred to me. Rohulamine spent years digging through archives in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia and documenting oral history told by elders in the family. Everybody of the quantum family was not uh, enslaved by George Washington, but the connection to George Washington is real, and the family 
from the Qantas from Mount Vernon real? Just like the story of how our family got to America in the first place, oral history traces the name back to Ghana on the west coast of Africa, where family members have reconnected. Now this picture is very important because uh, it's just a tree, but it represents a lot. Now, historians say African ancestors revealed that slave traders captured Egya Amkwando right here at this spot between family villages. He was taken away. And this is the Amkwando home, one of them, and there they are standing and posing. Now, you'll really want to pay attention here. It's believed the name Kwander came from Amkwando of the Fonti tribe. One theory from ancestral family members explains the name was lost in translation when slave ship masters believed the Ghanaian name Amkwando to untrained ears actually sounded like I am Kwando. By the 1700s, we began to see the O fade away and replace with ER the name transformed into what we now know as Quander. And being able to really connect, as you said, the family name from Amo I am Quando to Quander. It's believed that Egya had two sons, Henry Quando and another who seemed to have disappeared. The Quander family is broken up into four main branches. We always remember hearing that there were Quanders that were all related and that there were two brothers and one went one direction and one went the other. And while there are a lot of gray areas here and things we just don't know, one of the oldest documents comes from the Maryland side of the family during the colonial days in 1684. That record still exists today in Annapolis at the Maryland State Archives. Today we're going to look at the Charles County um, wills for Henry Adams. Henry Adams was a colonial legislator and slave owner in Charles County, Maryland. His will is the oldest detailed document in the country where a variation of the Quander name is found. And there we have, it is my will and pleasure that immediately after my death that Henry Quando and Margaret Pug be free to all intents and purposes as though they were no Negroes. So there you have the first reference to your ancestor in the records here. Wow, so this is the document that basically set them free. It set them free, yes. The idea of coming together has always been very central to who we are. The Quanders have had family reunions every year without fail since 1926. That's 91 years in counting. And at one point, you know, when Ronald Reagan was president talking about their oldest documented black family in history, <gasps> what? I think I might have been in high school when I heard about that. The family tricentennial reunion was celebrated 33 years ago in 1984 and received national recognition and media coverage. The Quanders were also involved in helping to preserve history at Mount Vernon, where remains of dozens of slaves have been found in unmarked graves. A lot of them were buried with no tombstone. They don't even know how many bodies are in this ground. We look around, you know, through the trees. Some of our ancestors are buried right here among us. And it was just... Oh, I mean, just cold chills just came over me. A memorial for slaves was established, and an exhibit now exists at Mount Vernon called Lives Bound Together. This is where Nancy Carter Quander is listed as one of the 19 slaves whose story is highlighted. It goes down several generations. Nancy Carter became a Quander after she was freed and married Charles Quander. There are no clear records of where Charles Quander came from before he married Nancy, but it's believed that all of the Quanders are descendants of Henry Quando and his lost brother. So I journal, so okay. I'm going to put you down in my journal, man. It's funny, my journal, this <laughs> fight was long, is actually about wow. slave journal. Mount Vernon's first black interpreter guy was a Quander. Oh, I Quander. Yeah. And another family member, Jay Quander, he also worked there. And I'm like, wow. I said, it's almost, it's, a, it's like we've come full circle. <laughs> Our parents used to be slaves, forefather slaves here. And here my son is, he's the director of food and beverage. <laughs> the Quanders went from being slaves and farmers. He used to raise chickens and a cow and a pig. To teachers and administrators. And they inspired me, and so... I looked to them for inspiration, and because of them, I became a teacher. And even if it's a boomerang, you can see it. That's not who I want to be, and that can be your strength, too. You know how they say um, history is power, almost? Yes. Um, for so long, I, um, oh God. I've known about the history, 
my family has not done a good job of connecting me with the quarter family. Yeah, I understand. I understand. <laughs> Because this is part of the problem with the quarter. I'm sorry, I don't mean to get emotional. But no, you don't have to. But a lot of us. It means yeah. a lot to me yeah. to be able to yeah. sit here with you and to yeah. go through these documents. And, and realize this is where you came from. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot. To face reality, to realize you're in the same family as Nellie Quander, who was a co-incorporator and first international president of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. He's mine to he belongs to me. And Elizabeth, or Sis Quander, was a singer with Duke Ellington. There was also Paul Quander, a former deputy mayor for public safety and justice in D.C. And Rohila Mean Quander, our family historian, is an author and retired senior administrative judge. The situation in North Korea demands... General Vincent Brooks is also a descendant of the Quander family. He's currently the United Nations Command and Combined Forces Command over the United States Forces, Korea. The Quander name kept showing up in the right place places like street signs all over the DMV and this school right here in Fairfax County. Everyone in the area knows something about the Quander name. It stands for something and uh, it's up to us as elders to try to uh, pass that on. These experiences make us who we are. And like many families, we don't know everything. Parts of our backstory lost somewhere between the pages of history that may never be uncovered. But now, sitting around this dinner table, Quander family members say the key to preserving history and protecting such a rich legacy is through education, faith, and focus. They hope that through their stories of perseverance and rising from the ashes, that you're inspired to dig deeper into your heritage and stand strong even in the face of adversity. And before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. That candle is still burning. It hasn't gone out. We are that flame to keep that candle burning. We are many, but we are one. Reporting in Washington, Michael Quander, WUSA 9.